Hey everyone. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been playing around with um, not just using this AI era that we're in to build a chatbot or do something along them lines. I wanted to see how I could actually functionally bring AI into 90 Days of DevOps. For those not familiar with 90 Days of DevOps or myself, I'm Michael Cade. I'm I guess that one of the original authors of 90 Days of DevOps, it started off with me just blogging uh, every day for the first 90 days of 2022. And then we've blown up into a into a community. So I want to I'll touch on a bit of the history around that. But I wanted to touch on really the the emphasis on how we could use AI in our everyday. And I found a couple of tools that can that can massively help on that front. So what we're going to get through today is one, what is the project, a bit of history around that. Secondly, what was the problem or what was the issue or what was the what was the slowness really? There wasn't a real a real problem statement that I had. Um then what are the goals of of this whole session? What are we trying to get to? What are the tools that I use to get to this end state or this particular area that we're in now? And then what was the uh, what was the solution overall? How do we bring all of these tools together to to make something happen? Okay, so for those familiar with the project, either that through YouTube, through Twitter, through X, or or through the repository, is that? And I guess if you're here at the YouTube, this is my this might be the first air, like the first um, place that you discovered ninety days of DevOps. So the project, hashtag 90 Days of DevOps, started off in 2022. That was me focusing on 90 days of covering this, this vast topic of what is DevOps, what are the principles, the processes, and some of the tools, and some of the areas that we might need to know from a foundational level, and how could we put some of that functional or foundational knowledge together in a structured way, making it open, learning in public that I've always done in my career. Um, there was no structured DevOps, so basically create create something that you you were missing when you were starting, and then also making it accessible for, for absolutely everyone. That's the premise of the, or the mission, the charter of the whole project all the way through since 2022 has always been like, this is about learning in public, either just myself, a group of us, or a whole community. Um, there was no structured DevOps. There's some great smart people on YouTube putting a load of great content out there. In fact, they're all listed in the in each of the days. But then also making sure it's accessible. Not everyone has a credit card that they can put into AWS and just spend willy nilly to learn all of this good stuff. Um, 2023 was about getting a group of SME subject matter experts to be able to help me cover some of the areas that we didn't get to cover in that 2022 edition with a massive focus on DevSecOps. But equally, we didn't cover items in 2022. We didn't cover things like um, uh, OpenShift or AWS. We covered Azure in 2022. We did, we covered Golang from a program, programming language point of view. We didn't cover Python. So we covered those in 2023. Fast forward to 2024, earlier this year, we were focused on how could we create something that enabled 90 unique speakers plus 90 plus unique speakers to deliver 90 unique sessions in and around the topics of of devops and our our wider community on that as well so from a from a demo point of view this is where the repo lies so there's two aspects to this and this is actually one of the problems is that we have a repo it's been growing tremendously over the last few years, over 25,000 stars. You can see that it started on January the 1st, ended on March the 31st, and that's a continuation. So if we look at 2022, we can see that at the very beginning of that, we covered, and this was all written content, actually 110,000 words covering all of these different areas, networking, Linux, CICD, uh, Kubernetes, infrastructure as code, all of that good stuff. Um, and that was the first year, 90 days, 110,000 words. Then we dive into 2023. You can see this list of amazing people that helped put together those sections on their particular subject. So we, we covered, like I mentioned, AWS, Python, serverless, 
um, and some other serviced mesh. And then 2024 is a long list of 91 unique sessions. 91 because it was a leap year this year. So we decided that, well, we still need to cover something on that March the 31st. So we did so. So we got down to that 91 days. But you can see here that all of these are YouTube sessions. So we now have, we start, hopefully you start to see that we've got a disparate um, repository. So where we started building our, our community and then we start, we folded into a, a YouTube channel to, to get this content out and use that open, that free, that accessible um, method to get that out to the, to the, to the audience. But there was no tie-in. Yes, everyone on in the 2024 that had a session had the ability to write something into their markdown, but it wasn't like it, it didn't have to happen. Everyone knows that creating a session, writing a blog post about that session is not always the easiest option. So the problem was that we've got these two separates. We've got YouTube and we've got our GitHub repo. And they're basically separate. There's no tie-in. There was 22 people actually that that did put some stuff into their markdown. Some really comprehensive date. If you want a comprehensive look at at, at what would be like the the top level, would be look at day two in the repository. You'll see that 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 was a a, a great blog post, a great summary of the of the overall session. So like I mentioned, 91 sessions. It was all video content. It was the 2024 edition. It was a different audience to a degree. Like for me personally, I'm not reading too much anymore. So I'm watching a lot more YouTube videos, short, sharp, 30, 40 minute type sessions. Whereas GitHub was where all the written content is and it's where 2022, it's where 2023 is. So the problem is, is that we had these two distinct um, locations or these these two areas where we had had that. So there are no actual connections between the two, really, unless I've linked in post or, or tweeted something out about that. So the goal of this this little project that, I, that I've put together now is to bring the repository together with that 2024 and the sessions that we got from the amazing community. Like I mentioned, 22 people have already submitted and they put in their markdown um, for the sessions. Amazing, massively above and beyond for those. So how could we leverage AI, generative AI in that front, but without spending any money. This is completely open source learning for me. This is not backed by any company, no sponsorship. Um, how could I automate and, and how could I provide AI? Now I could, I guess in theory, I could go through each one of those 91 sessions again and I could take some notes and I could summarize that and put my perspective on those sessions for 91 or ultimately 91 minus 22 and put in some of my perspective on that. But that seemed like a, a lot of work. I've got a day job as well. So the tools in which we, we used, um, I didn't create anything from scratch. You lean on the shoulders of giants. One is called Fabric, and I'll get into a little bit more about Fabric and what that is and how we can use that in all of our daily lives, not just for, for what we're using here. And then I didn't want to spend any money. Um, I have used the OpenAI and other other um commercial ai tools llms that we have available to us but i wanted to take advantage of my shiny new um, macbook m2 and uh and use olama which allows me to run local local models um great for this this purpose okay so i want to get on to to fabric there's some amazing videos out there already and i'm sure there's going to be a lot more um the one that I stumbled across was Fabric. Fabric being a way in which it enables us to consolidate some of those patterns or prompts that we're feeding into things like ChatGPT to get a, a useful answer out. And you might have seen like job postings around prompt engineering because prompting is a skill that we're going to see from 2023 onwards in the job market, you're going to have to like, can you Google, you're going to see, or you're going to have to have that ability to, to prompt your, your question, your, your, your required output. Um, so fabric 
seems to be a very good and I've I've recommended this to some friends that aren't in the tech space either. People that are writing their thesis, being able to just summarize things that they're watching, take out YouTube videos and be able to summarize that. There's some amazing patterns out of the box that we can use, but equally you can customize and and maybe we'll get onto that um ever so slightly as well in this in this next demo. So without further ado, it's on GitHub. Um Daniel Measler has created this. He's created it and made it open source. There's some, some amazing information on this. Just in this readme is going to give you everything that you need. But ultimately, it's going to allow you to bring AI into your workflows. Um, big shout out, Network Chuck. I actually saw this after seeing the video from Daniel Measler. Um, and really, it's about taking the challenges and providing outcomes. And you can see some of the, the example prompts here around being able to summarize youtube videos summarize papers pdfs etc so i actually started before this um using langchain and creating a a way in which i could take the the amazing amount of reports and pdfs that i get from analysts and other other reports um and how could i summarize this and and this then fell on my lap and it was like this is amazing we need to uh, we need to dive a little bit deeper into this to get this up and running. Super easy. We can run it on any any um, any uh, operating system. I'm using Mac as I mentioned before. Um, I have Fabric installed. Fabric hyphen hyphen help is going to give you all of the commands that you have in there. But ultimately, think about this as we're going to take something and we're going to pipe it in and we're going to use a pattern to achieve something out of that. That's generally what I've seen out there. I haven't seen anyone doing anything else. Um, people copying the clipboard using PV paste or something into it. Um, for this particular, I'm going to curl one of those that day, day one of 90, 90 days of DevOps um, in that first year. And I'm going to ask it to, to summarize that or, or give, me a, give me a summary of, of that particular um, day. So bearing in mind, this is a blog post. Let's say a blog post is 700, 700 words to 1,000 words. And I don't have time to go for all 90. Now, I will say that every all of the, the 90 days in each of the years, at least the 2022 and 2023, they give you some hands-on scenarios. Generally, the way they're structured is the big picture. What is infrastructure as code? What are some of the options that I have with infrastructure as code? Getting started with something like Terraform, using Terraform to do something. And you can see here that just by using that pattern, I'm gleaning information. You can see that I'm I'm getting a bullet point summary of that. And this is just using one of the out of the box patterns that Fabric has available to us um, in a complete open source fashion. Um, I think I was summarizing um, the uh, the document or the paper. But what we can also do, and this is where we this is where that you'll start to see what we're going to achieve later on, is we're actually going to take the YouTube transcript. And we're going to feed that into Fabric and we're going to get a summary of that. Um, I think here I'm using a I'm using a, a pattern that I've just created to really consolidate what that that summary looks like. It's meant to be a bit more of a tweet around that 280 characters. You can see that that isn't quite right, but it is still quite concise. And that's going to give me a summary of that particular that video that is 28, I think 28 or 29 minutes long. So Pretty cool if you want to summarize something very quickly. You don't have the hour and a half, 90 minutes plus or um, to watch a whole video on something. So this could give you a pretty good summary of, of what you're trying to, to glean from that. Okay, so that's the first tool. I encourage everyone to get hold of that. Why not? Um, the other important thing you might have seen when I was running this, this model, I'm actually pointing it to Olama. There's some amazing blog posts. I'll try and find what um, what one I used and, and link that in the description. Um, the You can put in a, a chat GPT uh, API key, but obviously if you're going to encroach on that, you're going to, you're going to get charged. So again, wanted to use that, that local, local model. Um, the, the other thing is as well, is that to do the YouTube trans transcription is I believe you need a, an API key. Um, so, and, and I'll touch on that in a, in a short while as well. 
so as I mentioned, Olama was another big, big tool that I wanted to use. I didn't want to be bound by, well, one, internet, um, and two, I didn't want to pay any money for this. I don't get any money for this. So Alama, I think it's Alama.com, um, pretty basic website. But when you go to download this, and I, again, if you've got a GPU, brilliant. But if you haven't, it will still run. It will use your CPU. You can see that it's cross-platform. You can see how many models. And these models are have a description that will give you a bit more of an understanding of what they are. Now, I'm using two. I'm using, I have uh, Llama 3 and I have um, Mistral. So you can see there where I go, uh, um, a Llama um, list. It will show me the, the models that I have downloaded. And then we can interact with that just as a chatbot as well, just in the terminal if we wanted to. So what do you, what do you know about 90 Days of DevOps? Give it some time. It's going to chug away locally. It's going to find out that information, and it's going to it's going to give you a prompt back. Um, you'll see when I use a different model that it might not come back with a such a a good defined um, answer as well. Because we have to be careful with that, right? Is that okay? AI, AI will give us something back, but we still need to check our workings, make sure that it is it is what it says it is. So pretty cool stuff, though. You can see what that that looks like. Um, just a slash by to to get out of that. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. I encourage everyone to to get hold of that. Okay, so the other area is that I found as I was going through this this little journey of of using Alama and and bringing it local was the Open Web UI or the Alama Web UI that that was the formerly the Alama Web UI. Um, and this is ultimately is exactly what it says. It's bringing you um, out of the terminal and into a, a web interface that you're familiar with from a ChatGPT perspective. And now you can interact with that. But not only that as well is that I can start interacting that with with files. So again, if you search for web UI, Alarma Web UI, you're going to come to this GitHub page. Again, open source. And all the download instructions, all of that good stuff is is already there for you to follow along with. So I have this already installed. I actually have it down in my dock and I have it open here. You can see that it looks very familiar. You can see that we can look for our existing models that we have already downloaded. And you can see that we can pull down that Gemma 2 that I've, I've been, all I've been hearing this week is around that. Um, and then we can interact with it. We can start to, to to message and get information back out of that that model, depending on what that model is created for or honed in on. Um, it might be more beneficial against providing code snippets or ideas around that. Great, great purpose for that. Again, we're not going out to the, we don't require any internet at this point uh, and we're definitely not spending any money. Um, so, yeah, all in all, we're using a web interface to get that information. Again, that prompt response is going to be slower potentially than than what we see online. Um, and this is this is a bit of a hallucination. I like the way that they've done this. I like the fact that they've just made up the ninety days um, and some head headers and topics that that could be in it. But that isn't what we covered. We you saw from the original demo that we have um, some other. So some more it's more focused around the tool in the principles and the processes versus the soft softer skills. The other thing that we can do here though, um going back to that original point where I was using Langchain and I would have a separate um like embedding model that would allow me to just pump PDFs into it. Um now I could just do it all using Olama. I could just throw a PDF in there, I could get a summary of that. You can see when when I finally find um a relevant PDF that doesn't contain any any uh, financial information. I, uh, I I pick that. It uploads into into our model, and then we can ask questions against that. Like, provide me a summary of that, and it's going to give you the the three big ticket points or three main points that that we need for that. So, all in all, those three tools are very useful for day to day. Fabric can be used. Hopefully you can see. Uh, so I use the YouTube one. I use the curl command. Basically anything that we can use to pipe information from one place into Fabric, 
that's going to allow us to glean information from that. That could be a PDF. That could just be, I'm going to take that snippet, or that paragraph, and I just want to condense that down into a tweet or into a more a, a summary that we want to use. So pretty powerful stuff, just those three things. Hopefully you're already thinking, oh, I could do that here. All open source, all free, all open, all accessible on our machines. So what did I do? Um, could I, I could, I guess, just take that YouTube, that YT, I could feed that, I could create a script with all of those, uh, with all the YouTube URLs, which would be a bit of a pain. I don't really want to do that either. That's pretty manual. So what I did was I um, created a little bit of um, Go code. And I'm by far not a Go developer, but I was able to do it. I'm going to show you what that code looks like shortly. Um, basically, what I wanted to do is feed the Go code some playlist ID, which you get from the YouTube API, um, or from actually from YouTube. You get that API that you want to that you want to use for this particular purpose. You um, also provide your your YouTube API to be able to interact with that, and and that's a that's about it. What I then wanted to do was output that into a JSON format. So pull that down, get a list of all of the titles of the videos and the URL. They're two important parts because one, I'm going to need the I'm going to need the title and the uh, and the 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 YouTube URL later on, um, and you, I'll get to that as well. But first of all, what does this simple solution look like? So again, I created something called YouTube Scraper. Again, it's free. It's on my, my GitHub. And basically, it does exactly what I just mentioned. It's going to look at a playlist. It's going to pull down all of that information from a title and from a, a YouTube URL. And it's going to push it into a JSON file. Simple stuff. Runs in Go. Go run. Uh, yeah. Go, go run main.go. Very simple stuff. Make sure that you've exported out your. Uh, your APIs um, and your playlist ID, and you're good to go. You're going to get what you need. Now, again, I can see me using this later on in it for other other use cases as well, for other playlists, for example. So, if I go to Visual Studio, you can see all of the code. If I go and run that, let's make sure that we have our playlist ID. It's just going to fail if you don't have that, so it will remind you. Again, I'm on Mac OS, so it's export, same as Linux, a little bit different in Windows. And you'll see when I run this is that we'll have our playlist JSON file appear in our directory. You can see all the long list of all of the different names and all of that stuff. And if we go and look at our main.go, very simple stuff. All the packages that we need, all standard packages, a little bit of um, environment variables being brought in, and then the logic behind how we're going to simplify this and, and bring it into that JSON format. Very, very basic, very simple interaction with a, with a public API um, that you can see here. Okay, so how do, so then what's the plan? So at that point, great, you've made a little YouTube scraper. Brilliant stuff, well done. Um, again, I told you I'm not a developer by any stretch. So then I moved to a, a trusty bash script, which would allow me to iterate through that JSON file. And actually, this is where we pull in um, Fabric to be able to to give us that um, to give us that output. So I want to take those YouTube videos, the the YouTube um, the session name or the session title, the session URL. I want to feed that into um, Fabric, which in turn feeds it into Olama. And then I want you to spit out for each of the days. So you would have noticed in the in the um, 90 days of DevOps, we have day 01.md, day 0, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, for each day within that folder. So again, I just wanted to lift and shift these into, into that, that repository. So if we take a look at the, the bash script now, you see again we're going to just we're going to take that json file we're going to iterate our so our, our way through that with some with some logic and then we're going to spit out a markdown file the important part here is not only are we going to use fabric to summarize it but at the top of every single 
um, markdown file, including the ones where there are already data in there, like day two, for example. I wanted to make sure that we had a title in markdown at the top, and I wanted a the thumbnail and the um, and a link to that video within that markdown file. So at the top of every single every single um, markdown file, we would have um, we would have that that format, and then we would have the summary thereafter. So with that, we're going to run through that. It takes a little bit of time. Obviously, we're using a local model. Again, we're feeding that. You can see also see within that bash script that I have both of the models actually actually summarized uh, used in there, and one of them's commented out at the moment. So you can see here, there's a summary of of day. Well, it's almost a, an introductory video. Again, it's the it's probably near on thirty minutes long, and it's given me a pretty concise summary of what, what the project's all about. Um, you can see then that will iterate through. Day one will just appear and day two, etc. So pretty cool stuff now. I'm just going to have a folder filled with all of this. We could change that bash script so it did put it into a dedicated folder. If I then needed, you'll see also that, I well, I don't have the thumbnail folder in there, but I basically had that in the repository already, ready to go. And and really, it that's that's the solution. That's what I was able to create here. So just to summarize what that what that um what that was end to end. So we created that little bit of GoLang code that allowed us to scrape that playlist and provide us with a individual URL and title for each session. We then feed it, fed that into a bloggy.sh bash script, which then called upon our um our YouTube trans our YT transcription that we initially saw in the in the first fabric demo. We then piped that into fabric and then we spat that out to Markdown with our little added extra of um the title and the YouTube thumbnail and um and URL. And then we got that up into the GitHub repo and that's where you saw at the very beginning the the uh the over overall, but we're going to touch on 2024 in a little bit more detail now. So if we go and look at the 2024 edition, you see that we kick off things with a with a um, the playlist is there anyway as a link, but you can see that I have a title. That's a thumbnail. So if I click on that, it's going to take me off to that 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 session. I was going to call it an amazing session. That's my session, so that's like an intro. But then you can see. That summary, I didn't write that. Now, I did go over some of the, or well, mo all of these and make sure that we didn't see hallucinations or, or bad bad stuff that didn't make sense. Um, and some I ran, ran again. Obviously, some I didn't need to do anything because people had uploaded. Um, but you can see pretty short, pretty concise summary of what that session is. Most of these sessions are between 20 and 40 minutes long. There are some smaller ones as well, but yeah, it, overall, um, it gave us a good um, a good summary of what that session was about, what it what it um, could be, and I can see where we could take this um, in the future as well. So, how could we? Where could we take this? Um, ultimately, the plan being, well, there's a lot of different areas and a lot of different patterns that could be created for anyone's daily daily needs could we use it to create and reinvigorate and reshare all of this great content over different social media platforms so things like linkedin twitter for example two that i generally use um i've already started you might have seen in the original uh, in the initial um repo that i've got the youtube scraper i have a bash script that i've started called tweety which is obviously going to allow me to consolidate down those video transcripts into a tweet. I want that tweet to include a, vid a video URL and the title of the session. And then we're going to pump that, probably go one step further than that, and then start scheduling that out over those social media platforms as well. Then imagine starting to get some documentation and, and other, other or uh, diagrams and other areas on that. But 
I really just wanted to share that. I know we're coming up to 30 minutes, so I appreciate you uh, you spending the time. One, thank you for listening. Two, hopefully this enables you to go and start learning something new or like a continuous learning pattern around DevOps, platform engineering, all of that good stuff. If you want to jump into the into the repo and take a look, that QR code is going to get you there. We also have a Discord. It's pretty quiet at the moment. Come in, ask your questions. There's over nearly 2,000 people in there. Um, and it's a bit quiet for my liking. Um, so yeah, with that, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.